Who would have ever thought that a stage show starring Larry Vincent as Seymour, Master of the Macabre, would launch one of the biggest Halloween events in the world? Well, ever since that first production in 1973, the live stage shows found at the Halloween Haunt never fail to entertain and amaze. These well-produced shows provide plenty of comic relief, incredible stunts, and specially choreographed dance numbers. So when you feel you can't scream anymore, or the terror is just too intense, take a break and enjoy one of the many great shows at the Halloween Haunt. The shows found at the Halloween Haunt are as varied as the monsters themselves. Everything from the bizarre to the ludicrous can be found for your entertainment pleasure. The large theater, now known as the Charles M. Schultz Theater, houses the headliners for the Halloween Haunt. From Seymour to Ed Alonzo, the show has always featured a variety of talent. Months of preparation and hard work go into the production, making it one of the biggest and best shows of the event. Came in here basically and uh, came in with a, a treatment of, of uh, okay, we'll start with a dance number and then we'll do uh, this magic and then this comedy and then we'll do another dance number. And the whole team uh, at Knott's Berry Farm really made it all come together. So it's not really fair to say that I wrote the whole show. It's a collaboration of all the talented people out here at the park and, and some friends that I brought in uh, to, to, to help sort of spice up what I do. We have this great team that we pulled together uh, and they sit down and they just toss ideas back and forth and, and uh, you know, what about? And then I've got a wonderful guy in the studio named Rob Perez who takes these ideas, lays down the soundtrack, we record all the voices, um, and, and, and puts together a really nice show. We start talking Halloween right after Christmas. Yeah, at, uh, so we're like, oh, Christmas, Happy New Year. Okay, now at Halloween this year, what we need to do is I'm seeing pumpkins and it's kind of weird, you know, it's cold outside and you're talking Halloween. We start conceptualizing it the first of the year. Basically, I worked on this show almost the entire year. Uh, and even for the, the three and a half months that I was at uh, Knott's Other Park in Minneapolis called Valley Fair, I would sit and, and write and uh, try and come up with the ins and outs of trying to make the show smooth on paper and so we'd even have these uh, these meetings where the whole crew was here at a big boardroom and I'd be on speakerphone and uh, I understand that a lot of the time they just unplugged it. Keeping up with current times and trends the show continues to push the envelope with high-tech sound and lighting, sophisticated dance numbers and a multitude of talented performers. I uh, started to, uh, to talk to uh, Charles Bradshaw about the possibility of one day I might could do real good in that big theater and uh, of course uh, we, we never knew if it was uh, ever going to happen but uh, he uh, was watching me uh, closely and uh, came into a, a good position to where it was time to try something fresh and new in here and uh, he's been fired uh, because of it now. No, no, of course not. Uh, it's, it's gone over well and uh, I think uh, the, the fans uh, like it that come to the Halloween haunt. I'm having a blast. Um, the, uh, the, whole, the whole room is just a, a big ball of energy. We have a lot of fun in here. This is a little more risque. It's a little more cutting edge. Uh, the production numbers are, are, are up to date, real hot numbers. The dancers are hired for you know, their talents and, and, and some really strong dancers and singers. Costumes a little more risque. Uh, choreography a little more risque. So the singing and dancing is, is just really hot stuff. We have a lot of return customers, if you will, return audience, that they want to come and see what we're going to do each year. And it becomes kind of problematic because, you know, okay, what are we going to do this year that's going to be new? So it, it's a challenge, but I like it because then it doesn't become repetitive for us. Ed has a history of performing at Not Scary Farm. He has a, uh, an audience, you know, following that we believe will come to, to see Ed quite a bit. And there are people who come to see the production values of the shows, to see what we can create there, yeah. And there are a lot of returnees. It's a lot of fun. I, I think it's the kind of show that is fantastic for everyone. We, we have, you know, kids that come in and, and, and love what the, what the show has to offer. And uh, we get some of the oldsters that come in, uh, you know, like my uh, mom comes in here and loves it. Uh, and, uh, and then all the teenagers just think it's a hoot because uh, it's, it's a wacky show. It's crazy. 
I think it's going to be expensive now. It's going to, I'm going to have to really rake the price up. Uh, no, I'm having fun, so who knows? It's a, it's a good show, it's a fun show, and uh, you know, even if I'm not part of it, I'm going to come back and see it because I'm a big Haunt fan, that's for sure. <laughs> and scene! What the hell is this thing? Brothers and sisters, good people of Calico, are you ready for a hanging? Another show the Halloween haunt is famous for is The Hanging in Calico Square. In the early years, the show was patterned after its name, consisting of an old-fashioned witch hanging, complete with gallows, a hangman, and of course, the witch. The, the great history of the show goes back to when we, um, early in the years of, of Knott's, was that we hung a witch. We would march through the town with a, a witch on a cart, and all of the monsters would follow behind, take her up to the gallows and hang a witch. Uh, later we got a little fancy and put pyro with it, and uh, she would disappear and then reappear up on a, uh, on a storefront. Uh, it, was, it was quite different than the hanging they have now, and it, but it worked real well. We, we started with a, a stuntman and just hung a regular person at midnight. On, on the year after that, we, we hung a witch, and we would bring her up in a procession through the town in a two-wheel cart. We had a drummer at the, at the lead of it with a snare drum beating out a drum beat, and we would come up to the gallows and uh, march the person up the gallows, and it would be a girl, because it's a witch, and she would proclaim her innocence. I was the guy that would first of all lead the witch up to the gallows, go through the crowd. Um, once we got up there, it was my job uh, to put the noose over her neck and to hook in the, the safety harness. And at that point, she proclaimed that she is the witch and she'll be back and get all of you. That show drew like more people than you could imagine in the Calico Square, and and they were all yelling, hanger, hanger, you know, and you get them all riled up. But then when that explosion goes, it's just dead silence. The whole crowd's dead silence, and they see the bird fly away, and the smoke filters out of the picture, and it's like real eerie. And the people <laughs> clap. <laughs> because they don't really know what to do, and they start dispersing. It was, it's, a, it's a real dramatic ending to a show. That early hanging show was very successful for many years, but the time had come to make some changes and step up the production, creating a multimedia extravaganza. The premise for this new hanging show was to poke fun at current news topics of the day and make mockery of pulp culture icons. Tom Clough was one of the early creators in the 90s of bringing in pop culture icons. No one goes without um, a little lampooning during uh, this, this event, and uh, it's fun. We take the best movies and spoof those, so it's, it's that type of thing. So we just have fun with whatever happened in pop culture. So it sort of evolved into this mishmash of pop culture, and it used to be that they would introduce these characters and they would fight and they'd disappear and then they'd come back and then they'd get killed and then they'd get thrown off and that was it. Now, a character shows up, within three seconds they're thrown off the stage, that actor is running around, putting on another costume and coming back out within six seconds as another character. It's so fast paced. In a 20 minute show with 14 actors, we have between 60 and 100 characters come out. 
that's fast paced. So the, the main thing that has changed is the pacing. I've seen the show grown. It's, it's fully evolved from how they used to do it. Uh, my first hanging was probably one of the first years that the whole show was dedicated to a little bit of uh, uh, comedy and satire. The man who was directing it uh, in those days, or who took over the directing, uh, tried a few little tricks um, with some uh, pop icons. And usually it was just one. It, the whole show had a dark, serious tone through the whole, whole thing, and then the payoff at the end was some pop icon would just pop up and there would be some shtick, and it just turned the whole thing around. But it, even at that, the first two or three that he did of those were still short 10 minute things. So my first year of uh, putting the hanging together was probably the first year that it, it became a you know almost 20 minute show and, and we had several characters and it had uh, a little more variety. And before this evening's over, I guarantee something around right here is gonna hang. The challenge to keep the show current and fresh each year is placed in the hands of three very talented writers. Their job is to keep a close eye on what's happening in the world of news and gossip, always looking for the next joke to add to the show. The Hanging script starts the day after Haunt ends. It starts in November of the, of the year before because The Hanging is a topical show. That's the beauty of this show. We can cut, put new things in. If something happened ne next week, then we'll leave it, you know, we leave a parking space usually we can find to put, you know, the newest thing in. So what happens is that there's three of us that write it, and around middle of June before Haunt, we get together with our notebooks, and our notebooks have every single pop culture event that happened that year. It's the greatest time. What it is, it's, it's this, these three idiots get together for two months, we get together four nights a week, and try to crack each other up with who can be more clever than the rest. And some nights we don't get anything done because we're, so, we're stuck on one joke and we laugh our asses off for the entire night on this joke. Stop it! What am I doing? I can't believe I've gotten sucked into all of this. Enough of the lame segues. Enough of the clever so-called pop culture references. <laughs> From a writing standpoint, we, liked, we like to think that there's nothing untouchable. We, you know, take no prisoners. And, uh, that's just that's one of the funnest things about it. Now, of course, uh, uh, being that it is a, a, a family park and that kind of thing, sometimes we don't get ultimate say in what gets to stay or not. But we, uh, uh, there are certain things that have hit the cutting room floor that we just go, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> but that was so funny, you know. The, the hanging is the weirdest show in the world because you 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 have this huge momentum, then all of a sudden rehearsals start and you're done. And there's like a couple of days work here and there of at tweaking a joke, adding a joke, taking a joke out. But it's, it's the weirdest thing to just stop. And they start rehearsals and the show starts. And uh, I don't know of any other show that goes from blank pages to finished production with two months of writing and two weeks of rehearsal. This is crazy. And uh, if you've ever seen the show, you'll know it's fantastic. It's huge. It's a spectacle. And there's nothing better than standing out there and you just sort of you, you just sort of curl your hands up, hoping that the jokes are going to work, right? And then all of a sudden, people just go nuts, and it's oh, it's the greatest feeling in the world, knowing that the audience is on the same wavelength that you were. That's the greatest. The only bad part is the texts tell me I'm not allowed to come to the show and laugh at my own jokes. But you know, what are you going to do? No matter what happens in the world of news, good, bad, or indifferent, if there's a joke to be found in the context of it it's sure to make its way to the stage in Calico Square. The Hanging has been a staple of the Halloween haunt since its inception and will remain a featured draw for years to come. It started so small and it's become a tradition, I'm sure, for many people when they come to haunt. People have come to expect certain things from The Hanging and I think now more so than ever, it's to see what hot topics they're gonna get this year, like, you know, who's going to be focused on for the, the hanging this year, what celebrity, what events in our society. This is always the one place I come back in October. Like I said, this started off being a little six day, two, two show a night performance. And it's sort of evolved itself. And it's kind of fun to come back once a year and say, okay, where are we now and what are we doing now? It's fun to change with it and let it evolve. Everyone comes back to see the hanging. People have seen it. They talk about it, they say, oh, you work for that show, it's really fun. We really, we, we go to see The Hanging, we go to see the Good Time Theater show, but everyone always comes to see The Hanging. 